Love vision. We're talking about love vision. We're, I'm going to do a little bit differently than with these guys too because love vision is still a little young. And I think a lot of you haven't had a lot of, uh, you know, kind of experience with love vision. So I'm going to uh, speak to you. We have a lot of experience with love vision at the Cleveland Clinic. You know, this is the Cleveland Clinic way. You can't see it, but th that book was written by our prior CEO and endorsed by, you know, President Obama. So we must know what we're doing. Yes, we should just kidding. Uh, this is, you know, I've only received research funding from Body Vision. I don't think anybody would do any of this. I just, and, you know, no other discussion that I suppose is relevant to this. So, what are the challenges of the nodule of the bronchoscopy suite? I think we all know that we all go after nodules. We know that current equipment, when used alone, is really unable to bridge the user with the outcome, okay? And it hasn't been great, you know, up until now. And historically, the bridge to use, you know, this outcome required, you know, bridge the user to the outcome required kind of expensive technology high capital investment, a high recurrent cost, and really inefficient, somewhat inefficient workflows. So um, what are the challenges of virtual navigation, right? So for years, you know, it was that, it was that search of the green ball. You know, what is the green ball really the green ball, right? And you know, there was always this anecdotal observation that there was error, okay? And um, Norbeam has really kind of defined where those errors came from. When the green ball, it might actually not be the green ball, right? And we know that from work, work, work uh, Mike has done and Tom Gilbey has done and, and some others, that there's changes that happen between the CT scan that the paper the planning CT and the, and the CT or the, the body's anatomy or the lung anatomy on the bed. There's changes that happen. There's changes that happen from the, then till now and even during the procedure. Things like respiratory motion, airway displacement, atelectasis we're finding to be a big thing like that, that these guys just talked about, that Otis just talked about, local bleeding, and then the failure of tools. How many times has, has, has I seen Tom Bay show his cone beam image of a needle in a, immediately inside a nodule and not get a diagnosis? So there's a lot of failures. So we talked a little bit about this CT to CT diversion. It happens, and it doesn't just happen with the nodule. It happens, is there a point? Is there a yes. point? It happens with the uh, it happens with airways as well as the nodule. Okay, this is a really slick study that Mike Pritchett that Mike Pritchett did Mike Pritchett out in the community, right? Not a, right? Yeah. right, doing the great work that I just talked about, showing that, that there's divergence not just between the nodule but also the airway. Um, again, uh, Otis pointed this out before. You know, there's been other studies, but this is what Mike found: upper lobe divergence, 12 millimeters; lower lobes, 18 up to 18 millimeters. I mean, it's you know, it's a big deal. And it's not just the, 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 the nodule, it's the airways going to the nodule too. So you very easily could be going down an airway, and it could be the wrong airway, even though you think you're going down the right, the right airway. When you get to the green ball, it's clearly not the nodule. So what does body vision do? So I'm gonna, you know, you, a lot of you may not have experience with body vision, but body vision is like Uber, right? Uber connected customers with, un, with underutilized, unused resources, right? The customers are us, and these unused, un underutilized resources are cars and drivers. And yet they did it by integrating existing technology that was being used already for other things, like GPS, smartphones, data messaging. They developed these algorithms, Uber did, and software to connect these existing technologies such that the end result was they connected the customer to the resource in the most cost effectively, you know, depending on uh, you know, search pricing, in the most cost effective, right, <laughs> and, and the most efficient way. Okay, and body vision does the same thing. They connect the customer, which is us, the bronchoscopist, with the underutilized equipment, you know, in the room, the CT, right, the fluoroscopy, the bronchoscope, to create this really efficient and cost-effective workflow that gets us to the module. They network these, this underutilized equipment and tools, right, using this advanced software algorithms and cloud-based, AI-based algorithms, creating the synergy, right, which provides outcomes that are more cost-effective and more efficient than what we're already used to. They do this in four different ways. They use real-time augmented imaging, right? So they're taking multiple imaging sources simultaneously, right, merging them to help, it, help us guide a catheter to the target. They use computer vision, right, which, which is, I don't want to get too much into that. You can come to my talk on Tuesday, which compensates for dynamic anatomic variability. It uses machine learning, right, AI. It allows for increasing robustness of the procedure by not only integrating my historical experience, but everyone else who's using love vision, okay? Through, through cloud computing. So they use these algorithms, they integrate all these technologies in real time to make the overall output very precise, very efficient. 
So one reason, is, the spiral UAC is not a fluoroscopic navigation platform. It's an augmented imaging platform, which refers to any real-time imaging, whether it be fluoroscopy or whatever you want to use. Right now it's fluoroscopy, being augmented by other imaging sources, such as CT, ultrasound, whatever. These imaging modalities are fused, you know, image fusion, and, and they could be, you know, these sources could be real-time or historic, it could be the old CT, the current CT, Total spin that we do, I'll show you all this as we go along. So the end result is you get this augmented image guided navigation in real time, combining catheter tracking with image fusing, right? We utilize AI, constantly adjust for divergence, and then that's followed by augmented image guided biopsy. And I'm going to go through this. This is the really great thing about, about long vision, is that it doesn't take any, up, up any space. It uses everything you already have. You have a little you know, user tablet that you, know, you, you, you direct the software with, you have a board. You have a, a router, right, that's off to the side, and you have the, the main unit, which is which can be anywhere in the room, which is put in our tower. That's it. Everything else that you use for lung vision is already here. It's you know, the bronchoscope, the ultrasound, the CR, it's all being fed back into this, okay? So here's your localization board, right? It, it looks a little bit like some of the uh, uh, localization boards you've already used. It consists of these radial big beads. It's the technology uses to track the CR movement and orientation. There's no electromagnetic component to this board. There's a catheter, right, which has these little radial big beads, which allows us to track it better, you know, with fluoroscopy, right? It's a, it's a curved catheter, right? So we can, we can get around things like, we, like we're used to with curved catheters. Uh, it a, it's a, requires a bronch with a 2.8 working channel, but it's a compatible with biopsy tools, just like you know, every other catheter up to 1.9. This, this AI computer vision is trained to recognize the scope, the beads, the board, the catheter marks, anatomical structures, which allows for positioning respiratory variation, tracking catheter movement within different CR orientations. So you, you, can, you can actually pick which is the best orientation for your navigation. So, um, so here's, oh, space bar, okay, great. So this is just, it's very simple. Planning, we segment, right? We come out and we find a lesion, all right? We find the best pathway to the lesion after we do our own manual segmentation. Uh, registration occurs, space bar. So registration, uh, 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 a couple slides here, this thing, right? that's okay. Registration occurs by first finding, uh, doing, a, doing a spin, doing a spin with the, with, with the rib border, and then doing a local registration by putting the, the, the catheter in just the airways in, in the lobe and what you're trying to, uh, with, and what your, uh, your, your target nodule is in, okay? Here's, another, here's a registration. Okay, after registration, then you do a tomo spin, okay? And you're gonna find out exactly where the nodule is after, after you do your 3D reconstruction. Alright, there's, there's your 3D recon. There's your 3D recon, and then what you do is you mark the center. It know, you already know where the center is on your historical CT, and now you've really got CT body demonstration, both, both outwards and locally. So here's your navigation in real time. Here's your overlay, here's your catheter, there's your lesion, okay? And here we are, we went to the wrong airway, we pull back, and then we're gonna go into the right airway. Eventually up there, and then right up against the lesion. And if you want to, I can put this in LAO, I can add the best for it, I can turn it in any direction I want to just to make sure that that's exactly where I am. We do a localization verification with a CBT. So once we're out, we'll do a spin, another spin, a second spin. Again, we mark, we, we mark the two, uh, we mark the two, we see the tool and the lesion already. And then, we, and then we get a nice little, uh, you might have seen, this might look familiar if you've ever seen uh, uh, cone beam CT, right? So we're doing basically cone beam CT images with just our regular standard CR. And then the biopsy we do again, it's image guided biopsy. So you see the tool, and you see the tool coming right out into your target area. Now this is kind of a big target area, but when you have smaller target areas, you're not kind of coming straight on, you can actually angle to get exactly where you want to be, okay? We already know that this, this is matching up exactly where it is based on, on uh, this position is exact because we're already marked it on, on that combium spin or that combium like spin. All right, what about the data? 
All right? Well, there's a divergence trial that Mike did that I showed you a little bit before. I'm not going to get too much into that for the lack of time. There's, there's a registered feasibility trial that went on at several sites in the United States, both the Cleveland Clinic and several other places, academic places, tertiary care centers, community health centers, okay? So we did this all. Uh, this is our data itself, uh, uh, 43 patients. Um, uh, just using uh, at first, what we did is we uh, we used it with uh, SuperD because SuperD is a backup, and then we just said, "Well, we're so good, we don't need SuperD anymore. We'll just do uh, five years in cases." So again, here we are, 43 patients. We had a localization success based on gradual EBUS of, of almost 88 percent, diagnostic yield of 72 percent, definitive diagnosis, definitive malignant, definitive benign. Uh, you know, we're in Cleveland, we're in Ohio, got a lot of histo, so again, some cancer, some uh, benign disease. What are the pros and cons? I'll finish up with this. Well, there's cost pros, right? It utilizes the technology we already have in the Bronx suite. It integrates with any fluoroscopy platform, any you know, Siemens, Philips, whatever, 12 inch, 9 inch detector, analog, digital, doesn't matter. Doesn't require a proprietary scope, doesn't require a cable guide. There's no reprocessing cost other than the scope itself, and the overall cost per procedure is comparatively very low, right? That, that EWC plus LG is around, what, $2,000? If I've done 50 cases, 50 times, I didn't need to, I need 50 cases, right? With, with $2,000, $100,000 savings just in these cases I did. Efficient workflows, I'm a CI guy, you know, I'm a continuous improvement guy, you know, I run the operations of our suite. Procedure doesn't require a fluoroscope to move in and out. You, you just take the fluoroscope in and it's there. You're using it. You don't, have to, you don't have to put it in, do your spin, take it out, do something, bring it back in, do another spin, take it back out because we don't have electromagnetic navigation. The floor goes in, stays in, okay? Registration can be done quickly. Only requires a local registration, happens like that. It's compact. It doesn't require any space around you. It provides CBT-like uh, imaging capability, again, without needing taking your stuff down to this home beam suite. Procedural features, well, we talked about this. We talked about navigation only uses a catheter. Have a lot of real estate on the inner diameter for bigger tools to develop an extra current experience with historical experience. We talked about this. It can integrate any other bronchoscopic or imaging technology. So if they come about, we can throw it in there. Cons, it needs more experience. My last slide. Needs more experience, it's ongoing, needs more clinical data, definitely ongoing. Catheter design improvements, which are coming very soon, and operator independence, which is, which is improving and actually you know, 